All right, let's continue explaining example three on how to factor, uh, find a greatest common factor when you're dealing with exponents. Now exponents, the rules is really simple. You take the lowest exponent available and that's gonna be your greatest common factor. But let's break it down once again so you can understand it. X squared is equal to X times X. X is simply X. Now how many X's do they have in common? What's the greatest number they have in common? In this case is one. So x to the first power. Here's another example. x to the third and x squared. x to the third means x times x times x. x squared is x times x. Now how many x's do they have in common? One, two. So what's the, uh, the greatest common factor? x to the second. Look right here. x to the third, x to the second. What's the lowest one? x to the second. x to the second and x to the first. What's the lowest one? X to the first. And that's how you would factor, or at least find the greatest common factor when dealing with exponents. Okay, let's head to example four. Finding a common factor. You have learned to factor out the greatest common monomial factor from the terms of a polynomial. Sometimes you may need to do this before finding two binomial factors of a trinomial. Okay, everybody read example four before I begin to explain. Example four, write and solve a polynomial equation. Discus, an athlete throws a discus from an initial height of six feet and with an initial vertical velocity of 46 feet per second. A, write an equation that gives the height in feet of the discus as a function of time in seconds since it left the athlete's hand. B, after how many seconds does the discus hit the ground? Solution A. Use the vertical motion model to write an equation for the height, h in feet, of the discus. In this case, v is equal to 46 and s is equal to 6. So, using the vertical motion model, which we've used, which we've used in earlier sections, h is equal to a negative 16t squared plus vt plus s h is equal to a negative 16 t squared plus v is 46 and s is 6. Okay, so that's all there is to part A. You simply plug in and you have the vertical motion model. B, to find the number of seconds that pass before the discus lands, find the value of t for which the height of the discus is 0. Substitute 0 for h and solve the equation for t. So we substitute for h, we put 0. And that's equal to a negative 16t squared plus 46t plus 6. So now remember now, when the discus lands, the height is 0. Don't confuse this height with the initial height. So this height right here is after it lands. All right, now before we get this problem, we're going to factor it the same way we did examples 1, 2, and 3. Except before we begin to factor, we're going to factor out a 2 first. It makes it even simpler. See, I got a negative 16t squared plus 46t plus 6. Well, what number, what, what's the greatest number that can be factored out from these three terms? And that number is going to be 2. All right, can everybody say it's going to be 2? And don't forget, we, we want to get, see, that's, that's a negative 16t? Just like in example 3, we want, we want to get rid of that negative also. But let's do the 2 first. So 2, 2 goes into 16, 8, 2 goes into 46, 23, 2 goes into 6, 3. Now let's deal with that negative. We can put the negative on the outside. That means everything up here changes to its opposite. So a negative now on the outside. This negative right here is now positive. This positive here is now negative. And this, neg this positive here is now negative. Once again, we put the negative on the outside to factor it out, and then every sign changes to its opposite. So the negative becomes positive, the positive becomes negative, and the positive becomes negative. Okay, now after we factor out that negative, and we factor out the two, now this problem right here is a lot easier to factor. A lot easier to factor when compared to this. All right, so I take my first term, at squared is there, 
I take my last term, negative 3, that's there. I multiply 8t squared times a negative 3. I come out with a negative 24t squared. I write down all positive versions of 24. 24 times 1, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 6 times 4. Then I ask myself, which one of these combinations could possibly get me to a negative 23 when adding? So I know that 24 minus 1 would give me a positive 23. So that, that must mean that the 24 has to be negative and the 1 has to be positive since it's a negative 23. Now, a negative 24 times a positive 1 gives me a negative 24. And don't forget, there's a t and there's a t. So I actually end up with negative 24 t squared. So now I'm going to take my negative 24 t and put it here. Negative 24 t. And I will take my 1 t and put it there. Or I can just write just t. Okay, now I work with my greatest common factors. What's the greatest common factor between 8 and a negative 24? Excuse me, between 8t squared and a negative 24t squared? That's going to be 8t. What's the greatest common factor between 1t and a negative 3? That's going to be 1. Now I come to this side. What's the greatest common factor between 8t squared and 1t? That's going to be t. What's the greatest common factor between a negative 24t and 3? That's going to be a negative 3. So then I have my factors. And my factors are 8t plus 1 times t minus 3. And don't forget that that's going to be equal to 0. And also don't forget there was a negative 2 on the outside originally. See that? So now we're going to use our 0 property. Well, the first one is going to be a negative 2 is equal to 0. That makes no sense, so that's gone. Next, we're going to have 8 times 8 times t plus 1. That's equal to 0. And then we're going to have t minus 3 is equal to 0. And then we solve each one of these for t. Here, we get plus 3 plus 3. So we end up with t equaling 3. Here, we got to say minus 1, minus 1. So we end up with 8t equaling a negative 1. Divide both sides by 8. Divide both sides by 8. And we end up with t is equal to a negative 1 over 8. So we end up with t, let me put it down here, is equal to a negative 1 over 8. So after we solve for t, we got t is equal to a negative 1 over 8 or t is equal to 3. The solutions of the equations are a negative 1 over 8 and 3. A negative solution does not make sense in this situation. So disregard negative 1, negative 1 eighth because time can't be negative. So the disc is histogram after three seconds.